Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A long time ago when I first started to use Photoshop, I noticed that the photographers who were much more experienced than I was at Photoshop often used levels. And to tell you the truth, I really didn't understand their affinity for levels until I too became more experienced in Photoshop and started to understand how powerful levels could be. In this video, I hope to share with you the power of levels. We're going to be working on this image that I downloaded from Unsplash.com. You can see it has a nice little color grade color cast to it. I like it as is, but I think it's a great image to use to demonstrate what you can do with levels. Now there are two different types of levels in Photoshop. The first type will affect only the layer that you're clicked on. The other type of levels is an adjustment layer, and the adjustment layer affects everything below it. Now let me try to demonstrate this for you. Um, I'm going to get the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to do a rectangular selection around her eyes and part of her nose. And I'm going to duplicate this on my Mac by hitting Command J. It's Control J on a PC. And you'll notice that I just have that part on that layer above. Now that layer is the layer that is active. I'm clicked on that layer. Now I'm going to get the version of levels that will work directly on the layer. To do that, I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustment, Levels. And you can see I'll go over these controls in a moment, but you can see this is Levels. Now if I come in and I move anything, you'll see it's only affecting that layer that it's clicked on. See how it's only affecting that layer, nothing else. Let me cancel this. And let me get that other version of levels. It's an adjustment layer and it's right here under adjustments. And you can see that has its own layer. It looks a little different, but it has all the same functionality, eyedroppers, uh, sliders, as the other version. It's just a little narrower of a box. But let me come in and move this. You can see how it's affecting the entire image. So that's the basic difference between the two. The advantage of this version is if I want it to only affect the layer directly below, I could click this right here. That's clipping it to the layer directly below. Now it acts identical to the last version of levels I showed you, or the other type of levels I showed you. So this one, you kind of get the best of both worlds, don't you? And it also has a mask there. So if you need to mask it to only part of the image, you're able to do that. So most often, um, I think you'll find most of us probably use the adjustment layer version of levels because you could do everything with it that you could do with the other version. So I'm going to get the adjustment version of levels. And let's talk some more specifically about the different things that are in levels. Now, first of all, you, probably the first time you open it, you might move these sliders right here. And you can see it's pretty obvious that one's affecting the highlights. This one is affecting the midtones. And this one is affecting the shadows. Well, these two outside sliders, they're equivalent to the white slider and the black slider in, let's say, Lightroom or Camera Raw. They're pretty much doing the exact same thing. So if you need to affect the white point or the black point, you could move those two. The advantage, too, of levels is you have this slider in the middle, and you could affect the midtones with that as well. If you want to reset anything you move down here at the bottom, is just a little reset and you can click on that. Now here we have where does the white point actually start? So you can kind of move it over that way. Where does the black point actually start? Move it that way. And that is kind of equivalent to curves. You could do that more often with curves. A lot of people want to get a matte look to their image. This image already has a little bit of a matte look. They would use curves usually, go to the bottom left hand corner of the curve and move it so they're getting more of a matte look. Well, you could do that in levels as well. That's still showing you how much you could do really with levels. Now, there are some presets at the top. If you just want to, let's make the midtones brighter, you know, you could do that. Or you want to increase contrast. You have three different levels of contrast in a preset there. 
So you can do that as well. So there's presets here if you prefer to use those. Also, you have the option of working on individual channels. By default, it's going to be the RGB channel. You're going to work on everything at once. If you prefer to only affect the levels of the red channel, let's say, you could do that. Or the green channel or the blue channel, you could do that as well. So all that, that option is there. Also, there's an auto button. If you just want to get an auto levels adjustment, you could do that as well. So it just gives you an auto adjustment. But what a lot of people ignore, especially those who are newer to Photoshop, are these eyedroppers over here. And this is really where the power of levels could come in. Now, the, you can see this image has a bit of a color cast to it on purpose. It's a nice color grade. It looks good. Well, if you want to um, get a better white balance, let's say, you would get this middle white drop or eyedropper, and then you would click on something in the image that should be neutral, meaning no color, like the background. And you would get, you know, um, you'd affect the white balance of the image. Now the other two eyedroppers is R4, um, the black point and the white point in the image. And so you get this top one, this is for the black point. Now here you want to click on something in the scene that is absolute black. If you want help with that, what you could do is hold the Alt Option key and Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, take this far left slider and move it to the right, and you'll see you got that black screen. Now, once you start to see some color come through, those are the darkest parts of your image right there. So it looks like somewhere over here is where it's coming in the first. So I'm going to move that back, and then what I'll do is I'll click in that area to get a black point. Now to get a white point, you could do similarly, you could hold that Alt Option key, go to this far right one, and move that until you got some white coming through, and you could see what's really bright. And you could get a white point, like her nose. And you could see that you set the white and black point. Now often I found, when I set the white and black point this way, it's just too contrasty. It just doesn't look right to me. Uh, so what I would do is sometimes just click around. <laughs> you know, and, and try to get it, or I'll just come in and move this slider manually uh, to get it where I want. Sometimes I'll go back to the white balance slider, that one in the middle to get a gray point and click on that as well and see if I could improve it that way. So you could see how I really um, removed that color grade uh, from the image kind of accidentally almost by just using these um, eyedroppers over here. So there's a lot of power in those eyedroppers and a lot of people don't realize it and don't use it. Now I had mentioned that if you want to try to get that matte look, you could come over here and move this. Let's just leave this here. I'm going to leave it without that matte look. And I mentioned you could do that with curves. If you go to curves and you go to this lower part of, of the uh, curve and you push it up, you can see how you're getting that matte look. So you could do that all with, um, with, um, with uh, the um, levels adjustment layer as well. So it is very, very powerful. So there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So um, I would say, you know, get an image, experiment with levels, uh, see what you could do with it. Um, you'll find that, um, I think you'll find that it's a very, very powerful adjustment that is in Photoshop that a lot of newer photographers that are new to Photoshop at least um, don't understand how to use so they don't use it that much but once you become more experienced you're going to start using levels more and more and you'll find that it's an awesome awesome adjustment now one last thing when you do use the adjustment layer it comes with a mask so if you only wanted to apply this to part of the image what you could do is make sure you're clicked on the mask, not on this part, the actual adjustment itself. Click on the mask. You would get a brush, hit the B key on your keyboard, and to remove the adjustment from anywhere, uh, paint in black. And so if I wanted to, let's say, remove the adjustment from her face, I could remove the adjustment. Of course, I don't want to, but you could. Like that, if you want to add the adjustment, paint in white, hit the X key on your keyboard, and make white the foreground color and then you could paint in white to add the adjustment. So another advantage of using adjustment layers is you get the mask built in. You don't have to add it uh, later. So um, levels, I think um, 
probably one of the more powerful things you could do with Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>